All right. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Uh, just going to do a quick refresher again, make sure that it is showing up on your guys's end. But this is Paint with Lovejoy. And today's painting, we are doing an Australian um, gala. I think I said that correctly. But basically, it is going to be a pink parrot, pink cockatoo. And they are everywhere in Australia. And this was a viewer request from Australia. Um, so going to be lots of fun. So a few things about what you're looking at on the screen right now. I am reusing a canvas and there is a link in the description box below about how to regesso and reuse a canvas. Um, this outline that I already have on the canvas at the end of this live demo, I will upload this to the website and there's a link below that you can purchase download the traceable, print it out, and then you can use carbon paper to transfer this to your canvas. Or what I recommend is pause the video, draw what you see, and then pick up the video again when we start painting. So a couple of options there. And the traceable is actually just a nice way for my beginner painters to get their initial composition on their canvas. So that way you can actually focus a little bit more on the painting process. So what we're going to do today, and I am using brushes, we're going to paint kind of a light blue background. And then our uh, cockatoo here has kind of a, a pink and red headdress, a uh, nice little fro, red feathers here, and then it's kind of a grayish blue for the wings and the back. Um, and then we'll be using kind of some shades of light gray for the beak and then given a raw sienna, a dark brown eyeball. So we'll be kind of uh, working through all of this. So to get started, we'll start in the background. And when you, if you're following along and you don't have paint, but you have colored pencils at home or crayons, um, pastels, pretty much anything, you can still follow along with this video and use other materials uh, besides paint. So don't feel like you have to have paint just to follow along. I really just want everybody um, to be creative with whatever you have at home. So now I am using a large flat brush and we're making a light blue color. And I wanted a little bit more on the pastel -y side, so I'm keeping it pretty light, but you can make your shade of sky any color that you want. And as we're applying our paint, try a few different brush strokes. You've got kind of your full width. You can turn it sideways and create a smaller line. And then in all my classes, everybody's favorite Literally, you just kind of slap your brush on top of it. Um, and that last brush stroke, like I said, is everybody's favorite. So if you have anything that's frustrated you or any anxiety, literally just slap your brush on the canvas and hopefully you will feel better at the end of the process of painting. So, so I'm basically going to be taking this blue all the way up to those black outlines. And I did use a Sharpie marker on my canvas just so it made it easier for you guys to see the outline at home. You do not have to do the black outline unless you want to. But we're basically going from the edges of the black lines to the edges of the canvas, filling in all that canvas space. And if you are painting on a stretched canvas like I am, while you have your background color, take that color around the sides, the tops, and even the bottom. That way it just looks really nice when you hang it on the wall, having that color go around the edge. Um, so give that a go. And it is easier to do it now while you have the color made compared to trying to color match um, at the end of your painting after it's dry. And should you go over the lines or paint on the inside of your bird today, do not freak out. This paint dries in about 15 minutes. So anything that you don't like, you just paint right on top of it again with a new color after it dries. So acrylic paint does have a lot of wiggle room for beginner painters. All right, so just looking over at the comments. Hi, Kat and Sonia, thanks for joining. And if anybody has any questions today, please feel free to leave that in the chat and I will address it while I am painting. Um, and if you're painting along, even if you're painting with the live demo right now or you paint later on, um, send me pictures of what you paint. I will post them on my social media and that encourages other people to try painting when they see your photographs and your paintings. So please share those with me and you can email them to paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. 
All right, so still getting just finishing in this background. And if you prefer a different background or a darker blue, or maybe you want a sunset or you want green, um, feel free to switch it up. All right, and here, yep, went a little bit over the parrot, but that's okay. And I am gonna use that small pointy brush real quick to get the little space um, that we can see in between the beak. There we go. And again, totally okay if you overlap that area. We may, when we start doing the shading on the beak, I might go a little darker for that, but we'll wait till we get to that section. All right, and something fun to do once you have your base color on your background. Um, I'm gonna grab more of my dark blue, literally just slap it on there. And then if you need to, you can wipe the brush off. And then with light pressure, you're just gonna go right over top of it and kind of blend that new color into your background. And this is very fun, very therapeutic. You can just play with it. If you wanna get finger painting and move it around, um, go for it. If you end up getting to a color where you're like, ah, too much, go back with your original color and just paint on top of it. It is kind of just a back and forth and you'll find your groove. Maybe one day you were really good at painting and the next day, or I mean really good at blending, and the next day maybe it's a bit more of a struggle. That's just where you're at for today. Um, and there could be different variables at play. So be kind to yourself no matter what stage you're at while you are painting. All right, so now I'm actually gonna grab some of that white, go a little bit lighter up top. And you will notice when you use your lighter colors, it does get kind of eaten up very quickly with the color underneath. So if you want that white a little more bold, don't move your brush nearly as much. All right. And I did spend a five weeks, a little over a month in Australia at the end of 2018. And I did see these parrots everywhere. I loved it. It was so cool how many parrots were everywhere between the rose parrots and the sulfur crested cockatoos. Um, we had wombats and kangaroos. Like it was just, it was really awesome. Um, but these pink parrots were pretty similar to what pigeons are in America to where they're just everywhere and they cover the ground and they um, eat the scraps and the seeds and people sit in the parks and feed them. So it was kind of a nice just comparison to what I'm used to in America compared to Australia. But beautiful colors. It was so nice to see so many colors everywhere. All right, so once you have your background done, um, and if you're taking your progress pictures, I would recommend taking that. We're gonna move in with light pink, get our base in there, and then we'll go a little bit darker pink, then we'll move to the red, and then we're gonna get this kind of bluish gray um, wing and back in there, and then we'll move into the beak. So because I'm on an eight by 10 canvas, I am switching down to a bit smaller brush. And to make our pink, pulling some of that white aside, just like our blue, a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of red goes a long way to make a shade of pink. And I am starting off pretty light, pretty pastel pink. Um, start with the plume up here, the little mohawk. And I am going right over those black lines and I am painting this kind of thick because I want to blend some darker shades into it. So as you're painting at home with me, um, you don't have to do everything that I do, but just what you're doing is you're observing where I'm placing a color. And then if you're following along, I just want you to mimic to the best of your ability um, the same placement of where I put it. And what you're doing is strengthening your power of observation and the more that you do that, the stronger your observation and details of your observation will get. All right. And let's see, we're gonna get a little bit down here and then I see a question pop up. So I'm gonna look over at that, and see what I can address. All right, so let's see, question. Uh, one of the brushes, the hairs are starting to split away. Can you fix the problem? Um, even though you do roll the brushes and you pull up paint. Okay, um, so a couple of things. You may wanna clean your brush really good because when the bristles start um, moving away from each other, it means there's some paint down by the base where the metal meets the bristles and it's kind of solid paint. 
um, and that's what's kind of making the bristles spread apart. So see if you can soak your brush and clean it really good, um, or you may actually have to get a new brush and just make sure you clean them pretty thoroughly after each uh, painting session. All right, so now we're gonna be making a darker shade of pink, closer to magenta. We did add a good amount, but start small. Um, this is about the color, actually a little bit more intense. There we go. And we're gonna fill in the rest of the body and then do a little bit of um, details on top of the little plume. So again, just kind of getting that base in there. And they do have just such a beautiful rosy color. And um, I think I've stated in a few other videos, I tend to just zone in and use one brush for most of the painting. So if I'm using a brush, but you need a different one, you need something smaller, something bigger, um, feel free to adjust what you need at home. And if you are painting along as quickly as I am, you do wanna make sure that your background's dry before you move into your uh, bird colors. And if you aren't waiting for it to be dry, and if you mix some of the, the red and the blue, it will create purple. And if you don't like that, just take a paper towel and wipe it off um, for any of the areas that you don't want that color. All right, and actually I'm just gonna go right over that pink. And if you again are painting your edges, just when you get to the bottom of your colors for the parrot, just carry it over the side. All right, so now, and if you need to move down to the small pointy brush, go right ahead. I'm gonna start putting a little bit of shading into the fro of our cockatoo, our, our parrot. So kind of I'm using it sideways, and I'm just gonna kind of place, and these are kind of dividing each of the feathers. And then I'm gonna go in and blend it with the bit of the tapping method that we've done in a few other videos. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. Just go for a general area of where I've placed them. And I'm gonna wipe the brush off. And same with that tapping method. I'm gonna diffuse that color. It's pretty strong, so wiping it off again, but diffusing that color into the lighter pink. So this is one way that you can blend your colors. There's a couple of different ways to blend, so this just happens to be one of them. And if it does pick up some of that lighter color and starts diffusing that color into it, that is our objective of what we're going for right now. Remember to breathe. If you're holding your breath, take a big inhale, relax. This is just painting. It is not the end of the world. Hopefully it's the beginning of a new world for you and realizing just how much you enjoy creativity. All right, so I'm actually gonna go back to that light pink and get a little highlight on the belly here. So I do need to make that again. So if you need to, just grab more of your white and then on the perimeter of that darker color, the darker pink, you can just mix in a little bit of that shade and kind of come back to that lighter color. And again, just gonna slap that on the belly and then with that light pressure, just kind of blend it in. Let's get a little bit up in here. And with this lighter color, this is what we call our highlight. So we are going for kind of three values. Our highlight, our medium pink's gonna be our midtone, and then our dark shadow value, if we go with more red, is called our shadow, obviously. And you can pretty much create anything by using three shades. And the more that you paint, the more you will get comfortable with that concept. All right, so, excellent. Oh, cool, we've got a few more people jumping on. Awesome, hi, Ray and Anita. Excellent, so let's see, we love parrots. I do too. Ah, oh, yellow-crowned Amazon, beautiful. Those, I grew up with the African gray parrot, and that was a lot of fun. Mmm, scarlet macaws are very pretty too. Very cool, thanks. And like I said earlier, when I was in Australia for that time frame, it was just so cool to see the parrots everywhere. And with how pink these guys were and being on the ground so much, um, they just looked great with their green backgrounds and just going about their daily life and foraging and finding food. 
All right, so now we're gonna go one shade darker. So I'm actually just grabbing that direct red. I'm mixing a touch of that middle tone color, that magenta, but not much because I do want this to be my darker shade. All right, and here I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna place the color on there and then we'll do that tapping method to blend it in. So again, this is our darker, our shadow value placing it in the opposite side of where our light source would be coming from. And this is what helps create this illusion on a flat surface. So I tell all my students that you are magicians because you are creating uh, a 3D object, the illusion of a 3D object on a flat 2D surface. All right, and again, those of you painting at home, um, just notice the placement of where I'm putting this darker color and do your best to come close to that or mimic it to the best of your ability. All right, doing the same thing, getting some of that darker into the fro, the plume of the cockatoo. All right, and I did have a couple of parakeets as a kid too, and I loved all of it. Birds were so, I still find birds immensely fascinating. And living in San Diego, uh, we have all the green parrots, the OB parrots. Um, and they, it's just so cool to see them fly in their herd and just have fun, do their thing. Some people don't like them here, but I think they're pretty awesome. So I did actually clean my brush to get rid of all that darkness. Um, and then I'm gonna start doing that tapping method to start blending the dark color into the middle tone. And if you clean your brush, you do want to dry it off. You don't want your brush dripping wet with this and you don't want to add extra excess water on top of your acrylic paint. So kind of a rule of thumb, if you do add um, water to your acrylic paint, you never want to add more than about 30%. And I just generally say you never want your brush dripping wet with water. You can be dripping wet with paint. <laughs> That would be great for some cool effects. All right, and again, if you do need to go back and make that middle magenta color, go right ahead. And if it is slightly different, that's okay. Um, but we're just, whoops, got a little extra white on there. So blending with acrylic paint sometimes is a bit of a back and forth to where maybe you put that darker color on, but you have to go back to your mid-tone or you have to go back to your highlights. So don't feel like it has to be exactly what I do, or you have to get it perfect on the first try. Painting is a conversation between yourself, what you're looking at, and what you're applying to the canvas to paint. So be kind with yourself. All right, so let's see a few more questions. And we got some more people jumping on. Awesome, awesome. All right, so is it worth buying any special cleaner for washing your brushes? No, do not. I mean, unless you're doing oil paint where you need to buy turpentine or acetone to clean your brushes or specific brush cleaner for acrylic paint and even watercolors, soap and water, super simple. Um, and there's, I think on my website, actually, no, it's not on the website, but if you just Google how to clean your brush, there's a nice little uh, demonstration and step-by-step -step on the wiki, uh, the wiki how or Wikipedia. But generally, um, what you want to do is you've got your hand, put a little bit of soap on there and some water, and then all you're going to do is just move your brush back and forth, then rinse it out with water, and then go back and do that again until the suds on your hand are completely clean and there's no color coming out. Then you kind of know that your brush doesn't have any more pigment in it. And then when you're done, you do want to kind of form your, whoops, that does happen. These are student brushes. Um, so you do want to kind of form your bristles back together after they're clean and then you never want to let your brush dry up like this. You want your brush to dry flat because you don't want the water seeping back into where the metal meets the bristles and like I just did because these sit in water that glue from where the metal meets the wood came apart. So you do want to kind of maintain the integrity of your brushes when you clean them. All right. So let's see, we got some more questions on here. Uh, yeah, the African gray parrots, uh, you're saying that yours was a bit of a nightmare. We had to train ours to um, be quiet when we put a blanket over his uh, cage. But yeah, he'd have his, choose his moments to be quite entertaining. 
All right, so another question is, do you take risk with your paint and your highlights? Um, yes, I do. Sometimes, I personally like high contrast in my work, so sometimes I'll actually go back when this is done, and I'll do that today with a bit more pure white. Um, and as you're applying your highlights, I'm gonna go ahead and start moving down into here. As you apply your highlights and even your shadows, get out of your chair and look at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away. And as you look at it from that distance, if you can't see your highlight or you feel like it needs to be more, then go back to your painting and then that's where you would take that risk and go really bright with that highlight. And up close, you might be going, oh my gosh, way too much. But then as you step back from that distance um, and that five to 10 foot distance is the normal viewing distance for most things in life and in art. So you want it to kind of look appropriate from that distance compared to um, two feet in front of you while you are painting. And the more that you kind of practice that and get used to seeing it from that distance and knowing the, the kind of change that happens, um, the more likely you will be to take those risks and um, over exaggerate your highlights or your shadows. All right, so I did take that uh, white tiny amount of purple so went for kind of a light, light lavender to fill in the wing and the back of our parrot. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the red uh, feathers. We're gonna go in with a little bit darker purple and then we're gonna go in with a little bit of a highlight. All right, and let's see if there's any other questions. Certain brand of acrylic paint that I like. All right, cool. Awesome. I appreciate everybody leaving comments and making this engaging. And I love that you're even talking to each other and sharing brands of paint and thing that you like. Um, such a great community. So thank you. So as far as acrylic paint goes, and right now I'm actually just making a bit darker shade. So I'm mixing more of that direct purple in with the lighter purple that I was using. And we'll put the shadow on first and then we'll put the highlight. So for acrylic paint, um, I generally recommend Liquitex as a brand. Um, I'm pretty partial to Liquitex and Golden Paint. And what I use here for teaching, because I buy in the half gallon, this is actually Chroma Acrylics. Um, and it is an Australian brand. And because I buy in the half gallons, I like how th uh, the thickness of the paint, it stays together, it's not running. You'll see some paint that you get and it just runs all over the plate. It has a good drying time, so we got about a 20 minute workability with this. Other acrylic brands, um, may, you may not be able to work that long with them. They may dry a lot quicker and they may, be, uh, they may run quite a bit. So I do recommend trying a few different brands and finding what works for you. So if you can grab them when they have either like a free sample or um, you know a sale and it's kind of cheap, try a few different brands and just see what works for you. Uh, with that being said, as you go to buy your paint, you're gonna notice that there's something that's called student grade paint and artist grade paint. Student grade paint is similar to what I'm using here, or it is actually what I'm using here, and it is on the bit of the cheaper side. Um, with student grade paint, your paint will be a little more transparent and you will likely have less color choices compared to artist grade paint but it is a great place to start. And once you maybe realize that you really enjoy painting, maybe one color at a time, move up to the artist grade paint, see the difference, and then figure out again what you like for your painting. Artist grade paint, like I said, is gonna be more expensive. Um, it does have a really nice thick buttery consistency and it's really nice to move along the canvas. Um, and you'll have a bit more of an opaque coverage. I personally use both artist and student grade paint because I actually like the transparent quality of the student grade paint for my style of artwork. So half of art is not about having the best supplies, but making the best use of what you actually have. So don't break the bank trying to get the best supplies thinking it's gonna make you an awesome artist. I'd rather you buy cheaper supplies Practice, 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 paint every day. That's how you're going to get better. Um, and then you can kind of move up to the nicer supplies that you like. All right. 
I have actually not painted my logo before, but that's a good suggestion. We might have to do that one of these days. Awesome. All right, so uh, while I was explaining that, I just went in with the purple, same thing, just applied it there and then did a little tapping. We're gonna go in with a little bit lighter lavender right here. Then I'll move into the beak. Oh, actually, we're gonna put a little bit of lavender around the eye, I forgot about that. And that I might move into the pointy brush. So just making that lighter lavender for the highlight on the wing. And here, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and grab that straight white and then kind of with that tapping method, blending it into that lighter lavender. And let's set that brush down. And we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go in with that light lavender again. Um, they do have a little bit of skin showing right there around their eye, so that's what we're gonna do. And then we'll go in with a dark purple and do a few of those little wrinkle lines. So again, if you need to mix that color again, pull some white aside slowly add a little bit of purple until you get to your shade and if it's a little bit different than the first time that's totally okay apply that a little thicker there we go and again if you go over the lines that's okay I remember to breathe. I can tell when I stop talking sometimes, that's when I tend to hold my breath a little bit more. <laughs> All right. Awesome, awesome. I'm liking all the different um, uh, materials you guys are talking about using. Oil paints, pastels, watercolors. Uh, I think that was it check out, you know, using oil pastels or pastels with water. Get experimentational. Have fun. You've got plenty of time right now. So why not just dive in and be a creative five-year-old? Um, I do believe I have a few requests for some watercolor tutorials. So I am working on those. And I'm also working on a few other videos for first-time painters as far as setting up your studio, your specific supplies. Um, I do have a couple of videos already on my YouTube channel that explain the difference between student grade and artist grade paint. So based on what you guys talk about and the questions you ask me, I do create different videos to help you guys along. And with that being said, uh, do check out my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com. Um, I've got quite a few bundled painting courses on there, a lot of free stuff, a lot of $2 ones, $5 stuff, and I also have my signature paint your pet class on there. And it is geared towards first time and beginner painters, and you will learn a lot more about your value scale, and we start with our dark spaces and work backwards, and you will be working from your own photograph of your pet. And when you paint something that you love, you actually put a lot more energy into it. All right, so around that eye, after I put that light lavender on, I just went in with the direct purple and a small brush and just did a few of those little wrinkle lines. So if you're doing these at home, you wanna treat your brush kind of like a pencil and just use the tip of it. So if you need to put your pinky out, rest that somewhere and you can use that as your pivot point or rest your forearm against the table. And remember to breathe when you're doing those lines, especially if this is your first time doing tiny little lines. If you find that you're kind of shaky as you touch the canvas, if you exhale as you touch the canvas, you'll be a little less shaky as you're making some of those lines. So, all right. Um, I am gonna clean the brush really good. I'm gonna go into that burnt sienna, which is kind of a reddish brown, and I'm gonna fill in that eyeball. And I am gonna try to make sure that I don't fill in that white little dot right there. But if you do happen to go over that white dot with the eye color, don't freak out. When your eye color is dry, you can take pure white paint and reapply that dot, that little catch light. And you can always, if you purchase the traceable, you can always reference the traceable as far as where that placement is if you painted over it. And here I did actually put my pinky out. I'm not quite sure how well you can see that on the screen. I do try to angle my hand so you can see what I'm painting a little bit more. 
Um, but just put your pinky out. You can use that as your pivot point as needed. All right. Um, all right. So let's see a few more questions. Awesome. Glad you like the paint your pet. It is a lot of fun. Um, glad you guys are liking the parrot. Ooh, hummingbird. Good option. I will put that on the list. And let's see, another question was, is it possible to water down acrylic paint so you can use it as watercolor? Yes, yes, you can. Um, and just like when we mixed our light colors into the white, a tiny amount of pigment mixed into the water um, will give you that watercolor effect. So that is the nice thing about acrylic paint. It is, it is very versatile. You will notice though, that as you add and water down your acrylic paint, it may dry actually a lot faster than working with the paint as I am today or working with it a little bit thicker. So take that into consideration um, while you're painting. If it dries a little bit faster, that just means you have to work a little bit faster. All right, so I'm gonna make a super light gray for the beak. So same thing, we're building on our skills. Start with a little bit of white, tiny amount of black goes a long way. And it's okay if you are using the rim of your plate or you know using the real estate don't feel like you have to get a brand new plate um, for a whole lot of space so you can work in tiny areas and if you do what i just did right there where it's like i actually went way too dark for that all i'm going to do is i'm going to pick up some of that make a new pile over here and then add more white to it to tone it down so it's never the end of the world if you go too dark or too light just Grab a little bit of it and make a new pile. All right, so we're gonna take this and I'm gonna apply it right on top of the beak. And I am gonna go ahead and make sure I go over all those black outlines. And if this bigger brush is too much for you, jump right down, grab the smaller brush. Remember to breathe. And again, if you end up painting this color on your background, um, wipe it off with a paper towel or let it dry. Make your background color again and then reapply. So if you would like to check out the artwork that I do, I paint with a palette knife and some of these demos I've uh, done my style palette knife. So you can check out the other demos. Um, but if you go to lovejoycreations.com, you can, and my portfolio, the art store, you can check out my style of painting. And I use acrylic paint, but like I said, I paint with a knife and my paintings have over a hundred layers of paint scraped on them before I consider them done. So I like to state that to a lot of my students so that way you know that you can layer acrylic paint over and over and over again. So don't be afraid to put more and more paint on, um, especially as you're learning. And if you do end up throwing those paintings away, that's okay. It is more important about the process of painting and trying new things um, than it is about painting perfect right from the get-go. So now I'm moving in with that pure white and on the top of the beak, we're putting that highlight on. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of a highlight on the bottom of that beak. And then again, wipe your brush off and you can either do a soft blending or that tapping method to blend this highlight into the top of the beak. And I would recommend, and I'm not gonna do it on the video because I would want the paint to dry, but you can go back and do a black outline and it kind of makes it a nice little pop art feel. So just an option. And if for some reason you went over that white little dot on the catch light that I was talking about, all you do, let that black or that, let that brown of the eye color dry. And then you take pure white paint and just go back and reapply. And literally it's just kind of touching that brush and pulling it right back. So one of our last little things we're gonna do, I'm gonna go back to that too dark of gray that I made, make it just a touch darker. And we're gonna put a little shadow on the beak. All right. All right, so we're gonna put, whoops. And if you actually go to apply and then you realize, oh, I need to make it darker, go ahead and adjust your color because it will look one way on your plate, but then when you apply it to your canvas next to another color, it may look a little different. So don't be upset and don't be afraid to adjust your color 
in the middle of applying it to your painting if you need to. All right, so again, I'm just gonna kind of place it where it needs to go, and then I'll do that tapping method to kind of blend it in. Oops, let me round that out. So again, wiping that brush off. And then just softly blending it in there, either a sideways movement or a tapping method, whichever one you are finding a little bit more comfortable. And again, if you need a touch of water to help with the blending, that will work, but just you never want your brush dripping wet with paint. If you need to go back to that first color, go right ahead. And then again, like I said earlier, remember to get out of your chair, look at your painting from that distance of five to 10 feet away, assess what, how it's looking, and then go back and change anything that you might need to change. All right, so let's see a few more questions. Do you have a specific palette? I've seen a lot of people recommending ceramic one, specific ones, I'm assuming, but they are very specific or expensive. Um, I would like some of the paintings that I have done, I do try to keep what I call a limited palette color, um, just to kind of give a little bit more lessons as you move along and as I'm doing the demos, but you would have a specific color palette based on what you want to achieve in your painting. Um, or if you're just trying to limit yourself to expand your skills. So that would kind of be a bit more of a personal call. Um, and I hope that kind of answered your question. Um, as far as the paint goes, the student grade paint is a bit more on the affordable side, so start there. And then you can work your way up to more expensive palettes or more expensive paint and colors. And again, just kind of find what works for you. All right, so before we head on out, I'm actually gonna go with that pure white. And since we were talking about pushing the highlights today, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and do that so you guys can see it at home. So using that pure white, and where I'm placing this is where I'm imagining that the sunlight, and I'm imagining that the sun's coming from that top uh, left-hand corner. This is where the light hits your subject matter, hits the parrot first. And that's usually the brightest point. And sometimes even going over, like right now I just put that white on there, but it's got that darker red next to it. Because that darker color's right there, that dark color pushes back and it makes that white pop forward. So start noticing how you observe specific colors, start noticing how you look at your painting different um, after you've added a few things. And I do recommend no matter what creative element you are doing, take progress pictures. It's really cool if you took a picture of the beginning and then at the background and then after we did the red and after the purple, to go back and look at those pictures on your phone and again, start recognizing how your brain is interpreting each picture, each picture differently um, as you chisel away that white canvas space or as you add a specific color or do something new. So half of art is just learning how you look at the world, what you want to explore, and kind of what's important to you. That's why art is so subjective. And the more that you figure out the things that you like, and can articulate those, um, the better you just get to observe and appreciate life even more. And nothing is wrong with that. All right, I'm just doing a few more little highlights around the eyes. Remember to breathe. And most of these are optional, so if there's some that you're just not quite ready to do yet, don't do them. All right. As I look at my reference photo, doing pretty good. Ooh, uh, the, one of the reasons why I was mentioning my main website, Lovejoy Creations, I did do a painting of this bird when I came back from Australia. And if you jump on my portfolio, you can see my version of it. And I did paint with a knife. It had a green background um, and it's got a little bit more life and uh, colors in its headdress. So little treasure hunt for you guys. So check out lovejoycreations.com and go to my portfolio and you can find that image. So I think this kind of finishes it for our demo today. And I did actually go past 30 minutes. That's all right, it was a good one. We had really excellent questions today. 
So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me this morning. Um, jump to my main YouTube page so you can scroll down and see the subject matters for the next daily demos. And I believe I'm moving into May um, as far as the subject matter. So I'll add that hummingbird and anything else you guys might want. And check out Keep Painting, check out the rest of my YouTube page, check out my online school, Paint with Lovejoy. Uh, like the video, subscribe to my channel. Uh, it's truly through your guys' support that keeps me going. So let's keep this going. All right, well, I hope everybody has a great day and I will see you tomorrow. Cheers.